Since the dawn of the 21st century, scientific discovery has rushed forward at lightning speed. Genetics, physics, computerized technology, robotics, virtual reality. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert as they uncover the truths behind this ultimate scientific deception. Welcome to Sci Friday. Invention, it must be admitted, does not consist of creating out of void, but out of chaos. And now it's time for <laughs> Sci Friday on Skywatch TV. Welcome. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining us, our science advisor and my best friend, the author of the Red Wing Saga. Three books out so far Blood Lies, Blood Rights, The Blood is the Life, and Book Four coming soon Realms of Stone. <laughs> Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi, sweetie. Hi, love. You know, by the time I'm done with this series, it's going to take the whole show just to read off the titles. And that's it for this week. Thanks and good night. No. Um, that was Mary Shelley, by the way, and a theme that we will be uh, exploring today. As so was promised. that from Frankenstein or from another one? Of her that was just a quote. Um, I don't think it was from the, uh, the novel Frankenstein. I think that was uh, something that she wrote later. She wrote, the, and there was another book called The Last Man. Mm -hmm. which is a dystopian novel all about, essentially, it's very similar to, um, oh gosh, what's the, the one that the movies are based on? Um, yes, I know, somebody shout it out to me. Oh, um, um, Modern Day I, Prometheus? Uh, well, no, it's The Last Guy, I Am Legend. Oh, oh, right, 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 okay, yeah. There are those who claim I Am Legend is actually a ripoff of The Last Man. Oh, okay. Now, I Am Legend is uh, what was turned into Omega Man? Uh, yes. But it also, uh, and, and then Will Smith was in a remake of it. Yes, that, and that was the that was the uh, version that was written uh, done with Charlton Heston. But that was based on the novel written by oh, a guy who's written all sorts of uh, of things that were mm -hmm. uh, in the science fiction genre, and his name is escaping me at the moment. Yes, yes, Richard Matheson. Yeah. Richard Matheson. Yeah. Uh, not chaotic at all. In fact, it was rather ordered in that you're moving towards an end game because of uh, certain events that were set in motion. That is cause and effect. Chaos. Yes. Takes that same idea but turns it on its head. Uh, we are talking today about chaos magic. We're going to ask that your kids, especially little kids, leave the room simply because this is a topic that I prefer they hear from you. So parents and grandparents, you learn about this from us. And then you talk with them about it, ask them if they've ever heard of it. Because honestly, it's being taught through a lot of means, through social media, not the one, we're not talking about the ones you're on, we're talking about social media apps that your kids don't tell you about. But also, I believe it's being taught in cartoons. Mm, yeah, we, we can draw pretty, pretty much a straight line back to Aleister Crowley, but if you take it further to its original source, of course, it, it goes all the way back to Genesis 1, Exactly, two. it goes back to Leviathan, right, the source right. of all chaos. And by the way, this was from the introduction to Frankenstein, that quote. Oh, okay. So, uh, By the way, if you've never read the original Frankenstein, you really need to because it is a, it's a brilliant book. Mm -hmm. Shelley was way ahead of her time. Yeah, written uh, in the early 19th century, 1810, 1820, somewhere right, there. Right, right. Um, yeah, and this, this particular introduction was from the 1831 edition, so a, a reprint. Um, who was it? She was married to Percy by Shelley, wasn't she? Yes, but her mother, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, yes. um, was a good friend of many of the writers, poets, and philosophers of the time, including Erasmus Darwin. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, the, the phrase, order out of chaos, is a perversion of what God accomplished in Genesis 1, 1. It is. By the occult realm. Uh, order ab chao is, a, is a, a phrase I'm sure many have heard in the context of secret societies or occultists trying to do workings on, on the earth. And, and the reason we're bringing up magic, and often in this context spelled with a K on the end, magic, M-I-G-I-C-K. Um, M-A-G-I-C-K. M-A-G-I-C-K. Uh -huh. uh, I can only spell it when I'm typing. <laughs> yeah, I know, um, I'm like that too. Is, is that this grows out of an attempt by the, the likes of Aleister Crowley to develop a scientific approach to the supernatural realm. An which orderly is approach to chaos, it is the craziest idea. Well, right, and, right. And getting into, actually there is a formula, yeah. a mathematical formula that, that claims to be inherent within chaos magic. A formula I know. of chaos. I know, that's what I find so incredible about it. And I, I read a, a, an essay by Kenneth Grant this morning all about chaos magic. And, and he and many others claim that the essence, the greatest 
tool in your toolbox, mm -hmm. if you're a chaos magician, is belief. Hmm. That somehow belief is not something that we place in another deity, in another person. It is a tool in your toolbox. Belief itself is part of the formula. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe <laughs> it or not. Uh, here's the formula. <clears throat> the spell formula is P sub psi equals P plus the value of 1 minus P to the, to the uh, exponent psi 1 over P. So they actually have a formula for conducting rituals. There's also an anti-spell. And, and again, parents and grandparents, this is why we were suggesting kids not, not view this without because we don't want counsel them to first. Right? Try this. There exactly. are little kids who will hear this and go, oh, that sounds interesting. Look, this is dangerous stuff, but we're telling you about it because Derek and I are big believers in looking behind the veil. That's why our podcast is called PID Radio, Peering Into Darkness Radio, right. because we want to look and see we're spies. Yeah. You're on a battlefield where we need spies. Yeah. So we're spies in the camp. Yeah, this spell, uh, P is the probability of accomplishing your magic. Psi is the value of, the value of Psi, according to this theory, is GLSB. G stands for gnosis, which means knowledge. Mm -hmm. S means the subliminal the subliminalization of intent, and B is belief. L is the link. So GLSB is equal to psi. So it's probability sub GSLB is what it actually is. This is a crazy mathematical formula that, that purports to make a true science out of chaos. And it's interesting that they use the character psi, which in other Another definition of psi, not as the Greek letter, uh, is you know parapsychological or psychic abilities. It has a lot of yeah. really strange connotations, but the the shape is a trident. The more modern shape is a trident. Oh, oh, oh! You know, something just occurred to me as I was re researching this last. Do you night. love it when a light bulb goes off? Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't want to dive too far down this rabbit trail, but. Um, the, uh, and I'll put a, a picture of the image up on the screen here so you can see what we're looking at. And, of course, yes, the, the psi is the, the trident, but it's also the symbol for your alma mater, uh, Indiana, Indiana University. University yes. But it also looks very much like some archaic stone uh, engravings, rock art, that was mm -hmm. discovered in 2012 on the Golan Heights. Um, I've been looking into dolmens, which are those megalithic burial tombs, which is kind of a, what, that's, that's a... Re repetitious uh, mm -hmm. redundancy. Yeah, it's a burial tomb. Picnic no, anyway. tomb. Yeah. Yeah, nor, not normally. No, yeah. exactly. No, uh, megalithic tombs that are found all over the uh, in, in the Jordan Rift Valley, the Jordan along the, the Jordan River, from the Golan Heights down to the Dead Sea. There are something like twenty-five thousand of them. Five thousand alone on the Golan Heights. One of them that was found in 2012 was found to have fourteen symbols engraved on the underside of the, the table, the, the slab across mm -hmm. the, 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 the arch, uh, the capstone on the, yes. of the trilithon. This is the first time this has ever been found in one of these dolmens, okay? This dates back to about 2000 BC, 1900 BC, just before Abraham came into Canaan. So this was the period of time in which the Rephaim were known to live mm -hmm. in the Golan Heights, which was the ancient kingdom of Bashan, Ruled the by Og, of Bashan. right? Yes. Who 500 years later, 400 years later, was was defeated by Moses and the Israelites. Um, anyway, the symbol that was carved 14 times on the underside of this slab looked very much like this. But being a straight into line with with a with a a, a uh, an, an arc. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the scholars there's no way to know what they meant by this thing. Well, the early, early versions of that Greek letter, it's the 23rd letter of the Greek alphabet, the early versions of that look more like a chicken foot because yeah. the early versions were probably put into stone and it's very difficult to do a curve mm -hmm. in stone. But these were done. These were curved in the stone. That took some um, time. Yeah, and by the way, this capstone is estimated to weigh 50 tons. That's pretty heavy. 50 tons. Now, for reference, that's about twice the weight of a fully loaded 18-wheel flatbed tractor trailer, you know, including the tractor part. Mm -hmm. Two of those equals the, that capstone on this dolmen's burial dolmen, and the stones around it, because it's also part of a tumulus, which is like uh, what the mm -hmm. Scots would call a cairn. Yeah. About 400 tons worth of stone piled around it. So it's the lintel that weighs that much. Yes, just the lintel weighs 50 tons. And so you got how'd another... you get it up there? Exactly. Don't know. 
So anyway, that just occurred to me. I don't want to detract too far from the, the, the theme, but anyway, it just occurred to me that, that this looks very much like what we're discussing here, the same well, symbol. One of the, the ingredients, if you will put it that way, of uh, chaos magic are something called sigils. And you can yes. create your own, and these sigils are something you're supposed to sort of put your essence into and your belief into and really sort of let something, chaos with a capital C, guide you. Think of the force. That's what chaos really is. The oh. force guides you in the creation of the sigil. Mm -hmm. And as you create the sigil, you put your belief in whatever outcome you want into it. You pour it into it. And the force will make it happen. So in other words, you're creating a little graphic, a little image, mm -hmm. a logo, if you will. If you will, yes, indeed. And into that you pour your belief that this will make something happen. It makes you wonder. This is speculation now. How many corporate logos are created through a process like this? Well, that's a really good question. And I know I've seen sigils online where there are whole books of them and what they mean. And, and some have been associated with some very dark crimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in, fa in fact, you recently spoke with a gentleman who... William Ramsey. William Ramsey, who's producer looked into Producer of the this. film called The Smiley Face Killers, in which yes. a smiley face or a sigil like a smiley face is found near these young men who disappeared and then were discovered mm -hmm. days and sometimes weeks later in bodies of water. And in almost every case, the police say, oh, this is just a tragic accident. Mm -hmm. Well, early mm -hmm. versions of uh, sigils, and by early, I mean early 20th century, looked very much like runes. Mm -hmm. But they've sort of taken off. In fact, there's a sigil for chaos itself, which right. is an eight-rayed circle. Mm -hmm. um, eight is a, the number of witchcraft. Hmm. There are... Eight, there are the, the four cross quarter and the, uh, sorry, the four main co um, holidays like the four and then the cross quarter holidays. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So think north, south, east, west, west. and then northeast, southeast, you know, all of those. So right. there are eight points and an eight pointed star is also part of this whole idea. Um, anytime you see an octagon, eight pointed anything, it refers to that occult belief in bringing back chaos. Hmm. Yeah, interesting, the, uh, the ancient symbol for Ishtar, Inanna, going all the way back to Sumer, was an eight-pointed star. Eight-pointed star, exactly. Hmm. Spirit of the age. Yep. Well, um, we need to take a break, but when we come back, I want to go a little deeper into the history of where this came from, and again, and tie this back to Aleister Crowley and then his, his acolytes who really developed this and why this is relevant today, even into things as diverse as the... Uh, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It even goes intelligence. back to the assassins of old. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of there, there, and this is why we do what we do. Sci Friday continues after this. Call now and take advantage of Skywatch TV's biggest giveaway of the summer. The Zeitgeist Summer Exclusive includes Dr. Thomas Horn's eye-opening new book, Zeitgeist 2025, Countdown to the Secret Destiny of America, The Lost Prophecies of Qumran, and The Return of Old Saturn's Reign, along with a never-before-released six-part Zeitgeist 2025 companion DVD, the shocking full-length documentary, The Secret Destiny of America on DVD, the full-length movie, Belly of the Beast, The Ancient Ancient mystery that holds the secret of Antichrist's resurrection and return, and the entire six-disc Rise 2021 Defender Virtual Conference box set on DVD, a $245 value, now available for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. In the new book, Zeitgeist 2025, you will learn hidden secrets and forgotten prophecies surrounding the year 2025, how the current U.S. government is tied to America's occult destiny, lost prophecies from Qumran, forecasting 2025 as the final age of man, how America's capital city is laid out to actuate a rival of Antichrist, and why historians and intelligence agencies foresee a totalitarian world government by 2025. You'll also receive the Zeitgeist Companion DVD. This six-part eye-opening expose on DVD reveals the malevolent Orwellian trinity converging around the world, seeking to homogenize the freedom to speak and think in order to create nations of assimilation.
assimilated devotees who will embrace Antichrist, and we're just getting started. This must-have collection also includes the breathtaking two-hour documentary, The Secret Destiny of America on DVD, featuring Dr. Thomas Horn as he reveals who the God on America's Great Seal and U.S. $1 bill really is, why 72 pentagrams in the Capitol Dome are used to control the ancient cosmocrators who rule the nations, the coming incarnation of Antichrist, and much, much more. But that's not all. For a very limited time, you'll also receive the complete RISE 2021 Defender Virtual Conference box set on DVD. This six-disc collection is jam-packed with over 26 hours of mind-boggling revelations from world-renowned Bible teachers, archaeologists, and ancient language scholars on the prophetic events unfolding all around the world right now. Featuring unforgettable presentations from Dr. Thomas Horn, Dr. Judd Burton, Bishop Ron Webb, Dr. Aaron Judkins, Pastor Mark Biltz, Colonel David Giamona, Dr. Ken Johnson, and so many more. Plus, for the first time ever, free the full-length movie, Belly of the Beast, the ancient mystery that holds the secret of Antichrist's resurrection and return on DVD absolutely free. Sold separately, these items hold a shocking retail value of over $245. Yours now for a donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling while supplies last. So don't miss Skywatch TV's biggest giveaway of the summer, the Zeitgeist Summer Exclusive, available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985. Here are the upcoming conferences and events featuring the team from Skywatch TV. For a full list and complete information, log on to skywatchtv.com slash events or download our free mobile app for iOS and Android devices and Amazon Kindle Fire tablets. We have links to the app stores posted at skywatchtv.com. Welcome back to Sci Friday from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert along with Sharon K. Gilbert. Please take advantage of the Skywatch TV magazine. We've got them here on the front of the table here. Sharon will hold up, my lovely assistant will hold up a copy here, the most recent issue. Um, great content in there. In fact, uh, I really like the article. I put, Not to pat myself on the back, but. No, I the, think you should. It's a great article. Dealing with the death cult of Molech in the mm -hmm. ancient world, Molech being the ancient god of the Ammonites, who were neighbors of the tribes of Gad and Manasseh east of the Jordan River and how that um, was part of Jesus' ministry, his mission, to reverse the worship of Molech, the God who demanded the sacrifice of children, and how God mm -hmm. reversed that. Jesus Christ reversed it on the cross. Amen. Uh, but Tom Horn's got articles in there every month. Sharon has an article, Josh Peck, mm -hmm. and guest, guest authors as well. You'll find it in the Skywatch TV store, skywatchtvstore.com. Also, and, be sure the deal is still on the, on the oh, Red Wing yeah. Saga. And join the Facebook group. I know not everybody here uh, watching is on Facebook, but if you are on Facebook, just type in the Red Wing Saga in the search box, and it will go. you, you have to you know, go ahead and say you want to join up. And, and I've, I, I approve, I've, I've only disapproved one person, mm -hmm. and it was because that person clearly wanted to get in there and cause trouble. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, look that up uh, online, and again, take advantage of the deal on Sharon's uh, The Red Wing Saga by Sharon K. Gilbert at uh, skywatchtvstore.com. It's a crazy deal. Um, this chaos magic thing, one of the things that I want to bring up, not only that it goes back to the ideas of Hassassin, the, the assassins in the old Arabic culture, what's that go back to, like, the 7th century or so? Uh, in fact, I... Sixth or seventh century. The motto of yeah. chaos magic is nothing is true, everything is permitted. And this idea of belief also gets into the idea of golems and tulpas, the idea that if you believe oh, something yes, is yes, alive, yes. it is. And that's Slender Man yes. is the most modern definition of that. Less um, um, Laughing Jack mm -hmm. and other crowd-sourced... Um, uh, monsters we talked about here on Skywatch TV, the yes. daily updates, and uh, on PID Radio over the past few years. Um, yeah, going all the way back to Genesis 1, verse 2, uh, and this is something that uh, Josh and I included in the book, The Day That Earth Stands Still. Great book. Which you wouldn't think would have anything to do whatsoever with the modern UFO phenomenon. Um, but in Genesis 1, verse 2, God hovering over the face of the... I'm not going to get into it because we really don't have time here, but the point is that... Chaos God, represented by the sea, uh, Leviathan in the Bible, Tiamat to the Sumerians, uh, Yam to the Canaanites, Typhon to the Greeks, Set to the Egyptians, uh, was defeated by God early on, but will not ultimately 
be destroyed until Revelation 21, when the new heaven and the new earth are created. Alistair Crowley's personal secretary and accolade, Kenneth Grant, who you mm -hmm. mentioned in the first segment, said after, after he took over, uh, after Crowley's death, he took over the OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis, he detected a set serious current in Crowley's magical system, Telema. Set being the god of chaos, the Egyptian god of chaos, Sirius, of course, being the star Sirius. Mm -hmm. And that's when he began working on his system of chaos magic that he called the Typhonian order, named for the Greek god of magic, ty or, uh, uh, of disorder and, and mm -hmm. chaos, Typhon. But another of Crowley's acolytes, um, Austin Osmond Spare, who was an artist, was a member of Crowley's, uh, another one of Crowley's societies that he created, the uh, Argentum... Um, and I, and I, is it AA? Yeah, AA was the, is the, the symbol, and I've forgotten the exact name now, but uh, the AA was a reference to Sirius. But then Spare went off on his own, and he's the one, because of his artistic leadings, I guess, created the idea that sigils were the way to um, create chaos magic and to put, pour your belief into these symbols in order to get what you want. Um, the interesting thing is that they both sense, apparently, according to research I've read, um, that the god of chaos is somehow gaining in strength or returning, perhaps returning from the direction of return the... Return old Saturn's reign? Yes, returns old Saturn's reign. Uh, so they apparently felt compelled to create this system of chaos magic in order to either prepare for this god's return or to win favor with this god before he returns. It's very Lovecraftian, this mm -hmm. idea that these old gods are coming back and when they do, woe unto humanity, because they have no pity whatsoever. And those who aren't currying favor with this God are just going to be destroyed. Well, of course, we know that God has already foreseen this and prophesied the destruction, the death of these gods. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 82 was God's death sentence on them for the rebellion. And we see in Revelation 21 and 22, lake of fire, destination for the devil, his minions, and the sea, chaos, is no more. It's interesting in the book of Revelation we see that the false prophet is given, he creates an image of the beast and he's given power, permission mm -hmm. to give it life. Mm -hmm. That's a form of chaos magic. It, it, it God is. God will allow chaos magic to reach a zenith mm -hmm. just before the return of Christ. Yeah, and thankfully, uh, we believe anyway in the pre tribulation rapture. So if, if we're still here, well, you know, God will find a way to protect his people through it, it's not going to be a fun time, but I, I don't believe we're going to be here for it. I hope I said Revelation 20 and 21, not 21 and 22, because well, <laughs> 20, 20 and 21, yeah, yeah, 20 and 21 would be, is what I meant. Um, but anyway. Um, Those who believe, and the, the truth is that there are a lot of young people who are buying into this lie, yeah. because it gives you permission to do everything and to achieve everything that you possibly could want. It's a kid's dream. Mm -hmm. What 13-year-old wouldn't like to control the world? Sure. And it's also a belief that nothing is real. No, all, the only thing that is real is what is real to you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, anything that happens around you that our laws would say are wrong, morality would say is wrong, that, that chaos magic would say, no, there's nothing wrong with that, it, because nothing really is happening anyway. Yeah, and, and that relates to the, well, that, that came out in the interview I did with William Ramsey, that the whole idea behind this uh, smiley face, which was a symbol used in the, uh, the Watchmen, which was the graphic novel, turned mm -hmm. into a film some years back. Uh, it was on a character called The Comedian, mm -hmm. who was able to just you know, wear his little smiley face and laugh while he was committing mayhem and killing people left and right, because nothing really matters, it's all a cosmic joke, so we might as well laugh because it doesn't really matter. And that's exactly what I read in all of these essays on chaos magic, that right. at the end of it all, you laugh because you know nothing has really happened. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, in the, um, the Amazon reboot, live action series, uh, The Tick, mm -hmm. which is a superhero spoof based on a cartoon from about 20 years ago on Fox, the villain called The Terror basically lays out that whole philosophy. That's the reason that he does what he does. The whole world is a, is a, is a uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a musical comedy, and I'm the only one making things rhyme. I mean, in other words, his, his, there's, no re, there's no real reason behind the violence and death that he brings to this mm -hmm. world because it doesn't really matter. 
It's just you do whatever you want because it's all a big joke. But by saying he's the only one that makes anything rhyme, he's saying he's bringing order out of chaos. Bringing order out of chaos, right. Again, the whole idea that somehow chaos magic is, there's a system for systemizing chaos. It just, it, it makes no sense. But as I said, the wonderful thing about what the Lord promises is that even though this is taking place, even though the enemy wants to, he wants to control your children, he wants to ruin their lives, he wants to ruin their walk. Even though this is all happening and the Lord is allowing the enemy enough rope to hang himself, yeah. there's a day coming when the sea will be no, no more. more. Right. And uh, chaos will be done. Yeah. This is a topic that we could easily have done you know, several shows on because there are so many things in here. I mean, there are links between some of the founders of these uh, religions based on chaos and the JFK assassination. Mm -hmm. um, the the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I mean, just the acronym alone, SETI, is Egyptian. It's an Egyptian word that means man of set, man mm -hmm. of the chaos god. Um, coincidence, probably fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, and in fact, this whole idea of, of um, uh, chaos and discordianism has had a profound impact on the, uh, the style of, of science fiction called cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk, uh, <clears throat> which is like a Blade Runner or altered carbon, which we've talked about. Exactly. And thus has influenced the idea that we can hack our bodies, we can become as gods, we can transform. Transhumanism is Transhumanism chaos magic. comes out of chaos magic. So this is far more influential than most of us in the church realize. In fact, I would say transhumanism is building the ultimate golem. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way of putting it. And the idea that we can somehow... Um, well, uh, again, so many rabbit trails that we can go down here, and we have just run out of time. <laughs> Bunnies but, all over the side. <laughs> absolutely. Well, have a blessed Resurrection Sunday this weekend. And yes, remember please. that Christ's death and resurrection, he has already defeated death. And he has prophesied the death of the small g gods who rebelled against his authority, including chaos. Amen. Revelation 21, the sea is no more. Chaos will be no more someday. Amen. Praise God. Praise God indeed. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. With Sharon Gilbert, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Sci Friday from Skywatch TV. Hi, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we are here to tell you about an exciting new program from Skywatch TV. We are really looking forward to this. It is a program that will address some of the strange, the unusual questions, some of the puzzling issues, some that draw well, people away from the Bible because mm -hmm. they don't think there are answers for it in Scripture. That is so true. Now, behind us, you're seeing the Unraveling Revelation logo, but we're going to show you right now the logo for the brand new television program that will probably debut in... March or April? Yep. It is called The Bible's Greatest Mysteries. Think of this as a program where we go, as soon as travel allows again, to uh, various locations and investigate, uh, interview scholars, archaeologists, mm -hmm. uh, Bible experts, prophecy experts mm -hmm. to help us to understand some of the mysterious aspects of uh, life on planet Earth. You've seen other uh, groups do the same kind of uh, television program. They try to explain it by saying they're aliens. We want to explain it from the Bible. We want to take all of these questions. There is no question that cannot be answered biblically. Amen to that. So keep watch. We'll be announcing the uh, dates as soon as we have it to, as soon, soon, soon as we have a firm date to launch. Right now it's still in pre-production, but coming soon from Skywatch TV, The Bible's Greatest Mysteries. Can't wait.